So let's talk a little bit about how, how cyber infrastructure feeds into our work. Um, the storage for the documents, again, as I look at this now in light of Dr. Rockwell's presentation, <laughs> this doesn't seem quite so overwhelming today. Uh, four and a half terabytes of data to date. The important thing to note about that is that we don't yet have any video materials of TR. The, the Library of Congress has just started their work in digitizing the film. There's remarkably um, more film of TR than I had imagined, um, given how early he was in the age of film. And so that will very quickly increase the, the storage and the archive that we're creating. Um, in order to ensure the permanence and security of the, that of the archive, uh, for our partners, the Library of Congress in particular, um, we have the great, very good fortune of partnership, partnering with North Dakota ITD. Um, Dickinson State University would have had to add a server and perhaps a staff member <laughs> to uh, you know, support our project and to manage all of that. And so um, we've contracted with uh, Information Technology Department in Bismarck. The servers are there. And so when we receive the hard drives, we do some, some pre-processing of the images, create the uh, access copies for the web, the JPEG uh, files. And then we ship those on to Bismarck, and we'll be taking a hard drive today of the recent images that have come in from Harvard and elsewhere to uh, add to the, the web access that we're creating. Um, so we have also, in addition to that, storage for the database about the documents, because, again, we're having to describe that we uh, have partnered with an organization out of uh, Bradenton, Florida, that provides the software. It's called Dharma. Digital Asset and Rights Management, uh, the software that we use to manage the collection. And so the database for that, and then the website itself, we're, we've engaged a firm um, in the East. And so we're, we're cooperating across, excuse me, across the United States to bring the resources together to make this project happen and make it accessible to the public. Um, the bandwidth demands that we expect for this you know, at the moment, um, if you go to our website, there's just a very small sampling of documents available, um, perhaps 20 or 30. But we have cataloged already about 14 or 15,000 documents. And those will be released and launched with our new website this October. Um, at the moment, the demands or bandwidth use is mostly for those who are cataloging. And I mentioned earlier that we're working really creatively on this project so that it does not take us 45 or 50 years to complete. We, uh, because we're using a web-based system, we're training and engaging volunteers and interns all over the country. So last summer we had five interns. Two were in Boston, one was in Bozeman, Montana, and one was in California. And um, we also had an intern working here on campus digitizing materials that we have as well. Um, but again, we're, the, the demands right now are more for that cadre of people working on the collections. Once we release a new website, we expect the, the usage and the demands to, to increase significantly. Um, so I'm, I'm going to give you, I think I have time here, to give you just a sneak peek of the new website as we're working on it. This is under development, and you can see um, in addition to the digital library, we're creating a lot of resources, uh, interpretive resources to, to accompany it. Um, because the digital archive is so vast, um, we really feel that uh, there's a need to organize that and, and present it in a way that is accessible to people. And so we're creating um, timelines. Uh, under the Learn About TR, there'll be kind of a encyclopedia section that gives a little introduction to various periods or events or activities in TR's life. So again, this is just a sneak peek of, of the structure and, and kind of how we see this presented. In addition to the digital library work that we're doing, the cataloging and creating this archive, we're, we're developing all these uh, accompanying interpretive materials for the project. Okay. Uh, so, what does this mean for the digital humanities and, and how the humanities are making use of cyber infrastructure? I want to share some comments by Stacy Cordery, who is serving as a visiting fellow with the Theodore Roosevelt Center um, for the next few months. Uh, Dr. Cordery visited us in uh, 2009 
to speak at our annual Theodore Roosevelt Symposium. And she has since uh, become a very good friend of ours. And she's very enthusiastic about the work we're doing. And she joined us just a few weeks ago and will be with us until July, early July, as a visiting fellow, uh, doing research and supporting the, the work on the website development and, and other initiatives we have in the process. And this is what she shared um, in a talk she gave recently about the Theodore Roosevelt Center and its work and what this project means. She says it's a revolution in the way historians do research in the way history gets written, in the connections we'll be able to make that we wouldn't have seen before. And what she's pointing to there is, you know, when a historian does research on a set of microfilm, they're scrolling through in a linear fashion, fashion usually, <laughs> items that have been organized in date fashion, in date order. And so they're not seeing necessarily the, uh, uh, the relationships between those items and cartoons that came out that were published that day and photographs that might have been, have been taken at an event. Whereas when we gather these into the archive and a user does a search in the digital library, they'll be able to see not only the documents, the textual materials, but all these accompanying uh, items. And so being able to make those relationships and connections um, within the collection is a new way of doing history. So um, she also says that this revolution goes far beyond TR. And I really appreciated Dr. Rockwell's reference to this as well, saying, you know, you, you focus on your power users and your scholars and your researchers, but you also have to make it accessible to the wider public. And um, TR is, is a wonderful subject because he was interested and fascinated by so many things. He had something to say about football and about art, and <laughs> so he, he's really a window into his era. And so we believe that this will not be a narrowly used um, archive just for scholars researching TR and, and his presidency and his administration, but really for uh, historians of the progressive era and uh, students and interested people um, across the country and, and across the world. Uh, and finally, Dr. Cordery said this goes far beyond North Dakota. Because of the digital revolution and the access we're able to provide, uh, people in Amsterdam and in Algeria can access the work that we're doing. Um, and the, the beautiful thing about this is, as you saw in the web design, uh, we're making sure that everyone who visits the site uh, will recognize that this was the creation of people in North Dakota. Um, hopefully they'll stop and think about what, what the design of the website says. What is this place <laughs> that uh, is not New York City, obviously, um, but it's, it's the beautiful badlands of North Dakota. And so um, we, we're very excited about what this offers to the state and that uh, it truly is a, a North Dakota project. Um, to learn more, I've got some resources here. Uh, obviously, our website, our current website, um, is much more limited than, than what I showed you a moment ago. But, but you know, hold on. October's coming. <laughs> we're, we're in development as we speak and uh, very excited about the launch in October. Um, our, on our blog, we uh, push out interesting documents that we stumble on in the new articles that are coming in. Um, a couple times a week, you get new notices there, Facebook, Twitter. We do also have a new e-newsletter. And if you're interested in keeping up on our work, uh, you're welcome to send an email to our library coordinator, Crystal Thomas. And uh, you can also write to me directly or, or phone me if you're interested in more information. So with that, I'll open it up to questions. <laughs>